In this video, we're going to have a look at some quadratic sequences. Now, we've spent a lot of time looking at quadratic equations, so we're quite familiar with the general um, uh, standard form of a quadratic. And when we're referring to it in the, t in the context of a pattern, we talk about the general term as being Tn, in other words, the term value in the nth position. And the general form of a quadratic is An squared plus Bn plus C, where n is the position number of the term, is the position number, and Tn is the value of the term. Okay, now, one of the features of a quadratic sequence is that it has what we call a constant second difference. So if we just have a look at what that means, whenever we are faced with a, with a pattern, one of the best places to start investigating the nature of that pattern is to start by finding out how much you add or subtract from one term to get to the next. So if we start with 1 and we want to get 4, we need to add 3. If we want to get from 4 to 9, we need to add 5. If we want to go from 9 to 16, we need to add 7. And if we want to go from 16 to 25, we need to add 9. And this is actually the pattern, if you think about it, of just the position number squared. 1 squared is 1, 2 squared is 4, 3 squared is 9, 4 squared is 16, 5 squared is 25. <clears throat> and we can see that the first difference of the terms in this pattern is not constant. But if we now find the difference of the differences... The difference between 3 and 5 is 2. The difference between 5 and 7 is 2. The difference between 7 and 9 is 2. And we can see that that second difference is constant. And finding the second difference is actually the test for a quadratic sequence. So if you want to know whether a sequence is linear or quadratic, you investigate the differences. If your sequence is going to be linear, you will have a constant first difference. If your sequence is going to be quadratic, you will have a constant second difference. Okay, let's have a look at an example of a general sequence that we generate using Tn is equal to An squared plus Bn plus C. So, right, we want to just investigate the general nature of this pattern. So, if I wanted to find T1, I would replace the n value with 1. Okay, 1 squared is 1, so that just leaves us with a, b times 1 is b, and we just have c at the end. If we want to investigate what term 2 would look like, we would replace n with 2. That would leave us with 4a plus 2b plus c. If we investigated the third term, we would have a times 3 squared plus b times 3 plus c. That gives us 9a plus 3b plus c. And if we want the fourth term, and the fourth term is the last one we're going to do, we will have a times 4 squared plus b times 4 plus c, which is 16a plus 4b plus c. So if we now write that as a sequence, so first term is a plus b plus c, second term is 4a plus 2b plus c, third term is 9a plus 3b plus c, and the fourth term is 16a plus 4b plus c. If we start <clears throat> to investigate the differences between the terms of this sequence, so if we find the difference between the first and the second term, the second and the third, and the third and the fourth, <clears throat> to find the difference of any, between any two terms, what we basically do is we take the second term and we minus the first term. T2 minus T1 gives us the first first difference. Then T3 minus T2 will give us the second first difference. Term 4 minus term 3 will give us the third first difference. So here we go. 4a minus a is 3a. 2b minus b is 1b. And c minus c is 0. If we now minus term, two from, uh, term, three, term 2 from term 3, 9a minus 4a is 5a. 3b minus 2b is positive b. And c minus c is 0. If we find the next difference, term 4 minus term 3, 16a minus 9a is 7a, 4b minus 3b is 1b, and c minus c is 0. 
So we can see quite clearly from this that our first difference is not constant. If we carry on and we find our second differences, so we find the difference between those two and those two, again, it's just the, the one that comes after minus the one that's before it. So 5a minus 3a is 2a, b minus b is 0. Um, 7a minus 5a is 2a, b minus b is 0. So we can see here that our constant second difference is equal to 2a. And our first first difference is equal to 3a plus b. And remember what a, b, and c were. a was just the coefficient of n squared, b was the coefficient of n, and c was the constant at the end. And our first term was a plus b plus c. So we can use these three things. So term 1 is a plus b plus c. Our first first difference, so in other words, the difference between term 2 and term 1, is equal to 3a plus b. And our constant second difference is equal to 2a. And we're going to use those to help us to find the general term of a quadratic sequence. Okay, so let's take a look at an example. Determine the general term for the following sequence. 5, 4, 1, negative 4. <clears throat> so whenever you are faced with a sequence, our first job is to find the differences. Now, to get from 5 to 4, we subtract 1. To get from 4 to, to 1, we subtract 3. To get from 1 to negative 4, we subtract 5. Our first difference is not constant, so we carry on and find our second difference. To get from 1 to negative 3, we subtract 2. And to get from negative 3 to negative 5, we subtract 2. So we can see that this pattern has a constant second difference. So we know that the general term of the sequence will be a quadratic. So it will be an squared plus bn plus c. <clears throat> Our job now is to find the values of a, b, and c. And we know that 2a from our general pattern is equal to the second difference. So we can set up an equation where we make 2a equal to whatever our second difference is. And we can then divide both sides here by 2 and we get a to be negative 1. We also know from our general um, sequence that the first first difference was equal to 3a plus b. So we can make an equation that 3a plus b will be equal to our first first difference, which in this case is negative 1. <clears throat> we now know what the value of a is. So we can solve for b. So 3 times negative 1 is negative 3. So if we move that to the other side, we'll have negative 1 plus 3, which is positive 2. And now the last thing we need to find is C, and we are going to use the fact that term 1 is equal to A plus B plus C to set up our third equation. So A plus B plus C will be equal to our first term, which is 5. We know the value of A, we've calculated it, we know the value of B, and we just need to solve for C. 5 minus 2 is 3, add 1 is 4. So therefore, our general term for this pattern is negative n squared, because our a value is negative 1, plus 2n plus 4. Okay, there is an example for you to try, so please pause the video and try this example on your own. Okay, determine the general term. So again, we start off by investigating the differences between our terms. So if we start off with our first differences, we would take 1, subtract negative 3 over 2. 1 subtract negative 3 over 2 is positive 5 over 2. We would then take 9 over 2 and subtract 1, which is 7 over 2. And 9 subtract 9 over 2, which is 9 over 2. Those are our first differences. Our second differences, 7 over 2 minus 5 over 2 would be 2 over 2, which is just 1. 9 over 2 minus 7 over 2 is also 2 over 2, which is just 1. We can now set up our three different equations. So we know that our constant second difference is equal to 1. We know that our first first difference is equal to 5 over 2. And we know that our first term is equal to negative 3 over 2. So therefore, our a value is equal to a half. We then substitute that value into the next equation. And if you, um, 5 minus 3 over 2 will give you positive 1. 
And then we substitute into our third equation and solve for C, and that gives us C to be negative 3. So therefore, the general term of this sequence is a half n squared plus n minus 3.